Hey guys, it's Kay. Today I'm going to be looking at addressing a little problem I have, and that is with the Raspberry Pi version 1. So I'm not ashamed to admit, I was one of those early buyers. I've heard a ton about the Raspberry Pi and I'm interested in having one to see just what the fuss is all about. Who used it for a week and then threw it on a pile of other tech. But now, I've decided to breathe life into my version 1 Pi. And how am I going to do this? Well, I've decided to use it as an IPTV receiver. And what is this you may be asking? Well, it stands for Internet Protocol Television. This basically means I'll be able to view live TV over the internet. Okay, enough dilly dallying, let's get on with this. If you're going to do this project, you're going to need a few things. You're obviously going to need the Raspberry Pi. You're going to need an SD card with a relatively high speed rating, a Wi-Fi dongle or an Ethernet cable connected to your internet signal, a keyboard and mouse which you can connect to your Raspberry Pi, now I've got the Logitech K400 Plus which has the mousepad built in. You're going to need a HDMI cable so you can view the output from your Pi. A power supply to power the Raspberry Pi. And that's it, that's all the hardware we need. Next for the software. We're going to need two pieces of software for this project. We're going to need SD card formatter and the Kodi like OS which is called Libra Elec. I've left links for these in the description below. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is put your SD card into your SD card reader and launch SD card formatter. Select the card in the pull down menu and click on quick format. Once you have your formatted card, you want to copy the contents of the unzipped Libre Elec file onto it. This could take a while depending on the speed of your card. Once it's transferred onto your SD card, pop it into the SD card slot of your Raspberry Pi and watch it boot up. On the first screen, it'll ask you to choose between Raspbian or Liberlec. Choose Liberlec, as it's a leaner version of the OS and so will run a lot smoother and quicker. And then sit back and relax and watch it boot up. Maybe even make a cup of tea, if that's your thing. Click OK. OK, once it's installed, it will reboot automatically. Once it boots into Kodi, we need to go through the initial setup. Just click Next, and then Next, and now you need to set up your network connection if you're on Wi-Fi. So select your network and input your password. Then click next. Next you'll get a page about sharing and remote access. Select SSH. This will allow you to access Kodi via your phone. And click next. OK, now for the interesting bit. We need to install the IPTV add-on. So go down to add-ons and click on the install box on the top. This will bring you to the add-on browser here you need to click on Install from Repository. Then scroll down to Liberec Add-ons. Click on PVR Clients. And scroll down to PVR IPTV Simple Client. Select and install. It will start downloading. And once it's done, there will be a tick next to it. And a message will pop up. Next, we need to configure the IPTV Add-on. So we make our way back into Add-ons and My Add-ons. Select PVR IPTV Simple Client. Go and select configure and here under m3u playlist url you need to input your iptv url link this you can purchase through a retailer or there are some free links available via google okay from here on end it's downhill now you'll need to restart this allows the system to reset and for the channels to be loaded so let's do the reboot and we'll be ready to watch all our free iptv channels okay going back in after reboot let's go down to tv and select channels and it may take a little while to load the channels and there we go we've got a whole bunch of channels now obviously the type of channels you get depends on the link you obtain so here i think i've got some turkish channels now that's fine because that's what i was expecting with this link so guys if you like this content please give us a like and if i get enough likes i might do some more content on the raspberry pi including how to turn it into an NAS, which stands for network attached storage anyway thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next one